Mr. Speaker, I rise on this day in this chamber as all of us and all Canadians are heartbroken. Heartbroken for the 18 people confirmed killed in a senseless act of violence in Nova Scotia. Heartbroken because the people whose lives were taken away will never be with us again. Among them was Constable Heidi Stevenson, who died in the line of duty. She was kind and she was gifted. She was great police and she was a great mom. She embodied the values that built this country, values like integrity, honesty, compassion. For her community, she paid the ultimate price and her service will never be forgotten. Like Constable Stevenson, many of the victims were also serving their community in the best way they knew how. A teacher, a nurse, a child's grandparent, a parent's child. Who has the words to ease our sorrow? Because there are no words for the pain their families and loved ones feel today. But I want them to know that all Canadians are with them, that this senseless, evil act will not define Nova Scotia, that today all Canadians are Nova Scotian. We share their grief, we are mourning their loss, and we will be there for them in the difficult days, weeks, and months ahead. Mr. Speaker, we have 11 colleagues in this House who represent the people of Nova Scotia. They are where they need to be today, with their communities across the province, grieving and supporting them. We stand with them today and every day. Monsieur le Président, les gens ont du mal à croire qu'une telle tragédie ait pu se produire dans des communautés comme Portapique, Truro ou Enfield dans des endroits où les gens se connaissent, où ils se font confiance, le genre d'endroit où les gens ne barrent pas les portes. Comme me l'a dit ce matin le sénateur Kutcher, en Nouvelle-Écosse, les gens ne sont pas à 6 degrés de séparation les uns des autres, mais bien à 2 degrés de séparation. Tout le monde se connaît. Tout le monde est en choc. Mais alors que ce choc laisse, pas, laisse place au deuil, plusieurs seront aussi en colère. En colère que les familles et les amis pleurent la perte de leurs proches. En colère qu'ils ne pourront pas se recueillir ensemble, en personne, pour célébrer la vie de ceux qui nous ont été arrachés. Mr. Speaker, this has been a heartbreaking year for Canadians. From January onwards, it felt like every time we turned on the news, we'd see reports of violence that could not be stopped, of lives that could not be saved. This horrific tragedy happened at a time when Canadians from coast to coast to coast are making sacrifices to keep each other safe. At a time where they're making the right choices every single day to prevent more heartbreak and more tragedy. So when we awoke yesterday to horrific reports coming out of Nova Scotia, Many of us probably asked ourselves, just how much more can we take? Monsieur le Président, c'est justement dans les moments les plus sombres. Ce qui nous motive à avancer, c'est la poursuite commune d'un avenir meilleur. L'histoire même récente de notre pays n'est pas dépourvue d'obstacles ou de tristesse. Il y a trois ans, Nous avons pleuré la perte de six innocents qui ont été assassinés alors qu'ils priaient à sainte foi. Nous n'avons pas laissé ce geste de haine empêcher la poursuite de cet avenir meilleur. Two years ago, we mourned a young woman, a little girl, and the many injured on Toronto's Danforth while simply enjoying a summer evening in the neighborhood. We did not let that stop us from our common pursuit of a better tomorrow. And over this past year, we've seen far too many communities shattered, far too many families torn apart by violence and by acts of hate. We will not let that stop us from our common pursuit 
of a better tomorrow. In our darkest hours, we have always answered hope, hate with hope. We have chosen unity over division. Because, Mr. Speaker, no one man's actions, no matter how cruel, how destructive, or how evil, can build a wall of despair between us and that better tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, today is a heartbreaking day for all Canadians. But while we are united in our grief, we must also be united in our resolve to uphold our values, to live by the example of those who left us too soon, to let hope, love, and compassion guide us during the difficult days, weeks, and months ahead. Because our better tomorrow will come. It might not be this week or even this month, but it will come.